So we're going to apply some solder paste to this PCB right here. So I have a couple copies of this PCB that I've taped down to the ground with just like blue painter's tape. And if I put this here and line it up in the corner, I can get a good reference for it. And so once I've got that, I can take my stencil and I can kind of roughly line it up where I want it to go. I think I have it upside down. And this will allow me to do multiple boards. So I can just flip this up, put a board in and drop it down. And if you lose alignment, yeah, you're going to have to move the tape. So it might be a little bit uh, tedious, but it's worth taking your time because it's going to determine the quality of your board in the end. So then once you have it taped down where you want it to go, you can take your solder paste and give yourself a good bit here. And if your stencil is big, you might want to put another one somewhere else. And the idea is to spread it as evenly as possible and to fill every single bed. So I'm going to hold the stencil down with a finger and I'm going to spread this over all the pads. I'm going to be, try and be careful not to bend the PCB too much. And then once it's pretty clean, I'm going to wipe the extra off so I can see. I think it looks good, so I'm going to carefully peel it back. And every pad should now have an equal amount of solder paste. If I can fit one thing right there. Oops. That might not solder. Usually when I go to use a hot plate, I start to turn it on and let it heat up while I'm placing components. It can take anywhere from five to 10 minutes to heat up, depending on what you're trying to heat up to. And I try and heat it up to less than the melting point of the solder. So somewhere about like 180 is good. So there's a couple of things to be uh, careful about with these. The first off is that the base is not super thermally insulated from the top, I and mean, it is, but, um, it gets hot. Not, not hot enough to melt anything, but hot enough that you probably don't want to grab it to move it. Um, and this top part is really thick. And the idea of that is so that it heats up very evenly across the whole thing. Um, so it's on purpose. That also means that it's slow to cool down. So you need to give it space and let it cool down after you're done using it and expect it to take anywhere from like 20-ish minutes. And um, it's probably safest to hang around while it does that, just in case, to make sure no one else grabs it. So you gotta plan your time accordingly. I like to just do it with tweezers. Got a steady hand. And anywhere on here should work. Yeah, so let's push these near the, the uh, fume extractor a little bit. As you can see, some smoke starting to rise, that's normal. And then you're gonna see the, the actual pads start to melt and that's okay. They may even melt into each other a little bit, which is probably okay. Um, and they'll kind of puddle. And then all of a sudden, once the solder melts, they're gonna contract into a shiny bubble. That should be good enough. They should melt uh, before, they, before it even gets there. So you can see right there. And then the other one is starting to, to melt. There it goes. Okay, so once we're pretty confident that everything has cooked, we can drop this down. I'm actually going to do some more things with this, so I'm not going to shut it off all the way yet. And I'm just going to push the boards towards an edge so that they start to cool off a little bit because I don't want to put them directly from high heat onto some cold surface. You have to keep in mind that while it's on the hot plate, the solder is still liquid. Uh, even if it looks shiny, it is, it is not solid. So you can't touch it, you can't shake it. I like to grab it with some tweezers. Just do it like that. And I kind of push it off the edge a little bit so that I can get under it. And that's it. And then they take about 60 seconds to cool down enough to hold, or maybe a little more. So this is an experiment. So um, apparently it's uh, really useful to have a hot plate to pull parts off of the PCB if you want to alter it or salvage some parts. So I found this in the, in the vault, and we're going to heat it up and see what happens, see if we can pull some chips off. I'll just put it right here. 
and I'm going to turn my heater back on. So I was talking to Remy about this, and Remy suggested heating it up um, pretty hot, but not hot enough to melt the solder, and then using a heat gun to specifically remove like an individual part. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to heat it up and try and remove most of them. So let's What about a big chip? <laughs> Not this really. Let me give them two pliers and try and hold it down a little bit. Oh, oh. yeah. Easy. <laughs> nice. Yeah, pick it up from the other fork. Too. There you go. Nice. 